In this step, we're going to set about creating a material for the scroll and getting it placed precisely, which is quite important for this particular material. The first thing we need to do then is to make the material. So let's get our hypershade open, make sure we have a clear workspace, and then let's go for an AI standard surface. I'm going to use the clay preset again. And then we need to load in the textures for it. So remember, if you want to use my textures, then you can get them using the link in the video description below. That will give you access to my project file. If you go into my source images folder, you'll be able to see all these textures. Just copy them into your source images folder and you'll be ready to go. So I'm going to load in scroll underscore diffuse, which will give us the color. There you go. Let me just put that back on the sphere. So you can see there is some white on the top and bottom of this, which is why UV placement matters so much. And then we're going to load in the roughness for it. It's going to be a file as well. Scroll roughness. And finally, we will load in our normal map. So that's a file. Don't forget to set it to tangent space normals. And then we're going to load in the bump value, which is going to be our normal map for the scroll. Now that that's complete then, I'm going to drop it on the scroll. Oh, actually, I don't think I've named it yet. Let's do that first. There we go, M underscore scroll. And now I'm going to drop it onto my scroll, but it won't look like it's on there. You see the color change slightly. What has happened is it's showing this part of the material, not this part. So we're done with the hypershade for now. And we need to look at why this is not showing our material. So we'll drop back into our UV editing workspace. And when we click on our scroll, you'll see that nothing has actually come up here. And that's because the way we created this scroll, which was using curves and nerves, means that there are no UVs at all. We need to create some from scratch. To do that then, we're just going to start with an automatic projection, which will give us that. That's just You can see that's given us loads of pieces. Let me just shade that. Loads and loads of pieces. That's not useful. So what we're going to do is go into edge mode, and we'll select every edge in there. And then I'm just going to get it from my cut and sew menu up here in my UV editor. I'm going to click on move and sew. There we go. And we can see that that has actually stitched it together and opened it out like a big piece of paper. What I'm going to do then is just get hold of this UV shell and try and get it so that it's the right size. And for me, I already know that it's not going to be because I've rehearsed this step to see what my problems are going to be. And I'll just make sure that it all fits within the boundaries. Which it does. That's pretty good, Shane. Nice one. Okay. So I'll just go back into object mode over here and let's have a look at how this is coming out. So it's a little bit stretched. That should really be circular. And the problem I've got is that if I go into shell mode and I scale it so that this is going to be circular, which is about there, the edges have come off, which means I'm probably going to get, let's just go into object mode. I'm probably going to get like a white bit somewhere. There it is, which I don't want. So I've got to do this slightly differently. So the way I'm going to go about it is I'm going to go into face mode and I'm just going to select this middle strip of faces here. Oh, let's try that again. This middle strip of faces. And then I'm going to do shift and full stop to get a larger selection than that, which is this. So this is what I want to have the writing and the drawings on it. To make sure that I get that then, what I'm going to do is just do a UV projection, do a planar one on the y-axis, make sure width and height ratio is turned on. And that now is going to create a new shell for me, which I'm going to have to rotate. I don't want to get this perfectly straight. I don't need to get it perfectly straight. Just close will do. And then I'm going to, let me just turn this on so you can see it better. I'm going to scale this down and get it to be the right height. like so, and then I'm just going to go into shell mode. These two shells here, I'm going to move off to the side for now. They're fine, I don't need to do anything else with them, but I've got to be happy with this one before I move on, which I think I'm about to be. Yeah, okay, so that's good, I'm happy with that. What I need to do now is bring this shell back in and make it fit in the remaining space of the scroll. So you can see it's too fat. 
So let's just scale it on this axis to make sure it fits within there. That's good. And I'm just going to put it fairly close to the edge of my other shell. And then this shell here I'm going to bring in as well. I'm going to make that thinner like so. And then to avoid getting any issues, I think if I go into object mode and now look, I might actually be getting away with it already. Uh, but I want to avoid there being any seams here. And the way I'll do that is by going into edge mode. And I'm going to double click on the top edge and I'm doing it on my middle shell. So double click on the, no, click once, sorry. I'll click once on the top edge and then go down to the bottom, hold shift and double click on the bottom edge. And then I'm going to go into cut and sew of my UV toolkit and choose stitch together. And I'll do the same on the other side. Stitch together. And that now is a completed UV map. So let's go into object mode and that's going to look terrific. Okay, we can just turn that colored view off. So that now is our scroll with some very kind of old school wizardy looking writing on it and some runic image and whatever this guy is. That's ready to go. So we've got one more step in texturing and UV mapping, which is going to be for, we'll do one of the books and I'll let you guys do the rest yourself. But that's going to be how we can assign two different materials to one object. That's what we'll be looking at in that step. So I will see you in the next step for some book action. Game Dev Academy is graciously supported by these absolute legends. If you'd like to offer your support, then check out our Patreon page using the link in the description below.